Hi guys, today I want to give you a little insight on polishing and the different finishings that we create for our customers. Without getting too technical on the process, I'll talk about how we and other silversmiths of course polish jewellery and how we're able to achieve for example that really nice high polish finish which is always very popular. Hope you enjoy and stay watching. If you guys are new here to this channel, welcome. I'm Kim, owner of Thai Design Distributors. We're a third generation family business since 1975, owning our manufacturing plant in Thailand where we specialize in producing high-end sterling silver and gold jewelry. We've got our own in-house range, but the majority of what we do is manufacturing exclusively for our jewellery designer customers. We've always had our head office in the UK and recently a support office in the US. Please do get familiar with this channel by watching my intro video, which gives you an insight about my background in the jewellery industry and the purpose of this channel. Lastly, please don't forget to like or subscribe to the channel for all of the latest tips and videos on jewellery manufacturing. High polish or that shiny mirrored finish has always been very popular for most of our customers. And I want to explain that getting to that really nice high polish effect or result doesn't just happen during the polishing stage, but actually starts with the master. So we're going back to the beginning of the production process before we even cast the piece. Starting off with a really good clean master means that there'll be less work on it later down the production line. What we don't want is surface defects on the master, otherwise you'll have to clean up the piece throughout the process and the less work that the silversmith has to do, the quicker it takes to finish. Now once we cast the piece and it's been filed down to a smoother effect, we can now focus on the polishing and the different textures that we can achieve. The heart of the polishing workshop is in the buffing machine and this is where we usually go through three different polishing stages using various buffs and compounds. Compounds are basically fine abrasive fillers formed into solid bars. They can be used to shine or smooth metals. In order to achieve a high mirror finish, a range of polishing and buffing compounds, polishing brushes, mops and felts are required. Polishing compounds are similar to sandpaper in that they are used from coarse to fine. There's many different brands available and usually our silversmiths would need to look at the condition of the jewellery piece first before determining what type of abrasive they will need to apply. So choosing the right compound is really important and also some specialise more in silver and others in solid gold. It's not just the polishing machine that we rely on. Burnishing is a technical term for what barrel polishing does to the jewellery. Imagine your jewellery being churned and pounded millions of times by tiny little hammers. We barrel polish to smooth any deep file marks as well as make the jewellery really shiny. So even though barrel polishing doesn't remove any deep file marks, it does harden the metal and create an amazing shine to your jewellery. And if we're polishing, say, small earrings, we can safely leave the machine running for a minimum of four hours. Now an ultrasonic tank is a very useful and versatile way to clean the jewellery and get rid of any dirt that's accumulated on the surface of the jewellery. Ultrasonic cleaners basically use sound waves to break down the dirt particles so what it does is create bubbles and ultrasonic vibrations in the water which helps to remove dirt and grime that's clinging to the jewellery. Certainly at our manufacturing plant we utilise our ultrasonic cleaners pretty often especially in between using different polishing compounds. Now there are many different finishing methods to choose from other than high polish. Satin is a very wide term for a matte finish and the silversmith can get really creative here and create light and shade in finishes because there's various satin finishes available using a combination of satin mop and fine frosting brushes. Oxidizing is another popular design choice that we've been getting more requests of from our customers. The black is often used to emphasize the detail in the more sculptural pieces. There are different oxidization chemicals on the market to create that dark grey colour. I say dark grey because you will never achieve jet black, so if you're wanting your jewellery to be really black, then I'd suggest going for black rhodium or ruthenium plating. Now whether you go with white rhodium plating, an oxidising finish, or adding satin as a finishing method, remember those finishes can look worn or a little tatty over time, so it may not be the most reliable finish to go with, which is why a lot of the commercial finishes is usually the high bright polish finish and why our customers continue to place orders in the high polish finish. Again, I think it depends on the jewellery design itself that you're creating and what it is about the piece that you want to emphasise because different polishing methods can really say something different about the piece and how you're drawn to it. 
Over the years, I've seen a lot of different finishes on jewellery pieces, and certainly the highly skilled people at our manufacturing plant can differentiate between a really good polish and a mediocre one. It's not just about getting a really good clean master before you start casting, but even if you miss one of the many steps that's essential in the polishing process, it can certainly affect the end result of the finishing, which can be quite noticeable. We've had customers show us samples of a piece that they may have had manufactured elsewhere, and you can still see a few tiny bits on the surface of the metal or that it's not as smooth as it should be or as shiny as the customer had anticipated. So it's really important again guys that before you place your official order with a supplier or manufacturer that you make sure that a sample is produced and you're truly happy with the finish of it so that there's a clear expectation from the start on how your jewellery should come out when you place that order or receive the goods from your supplier. Just going back to the various finishes there's an illustration on the tie design website on the different finishes that are manufactured plant mocked up in a range of samples and for more information if you guys want to learn further about polishing and finishing because one can get into more technical detail I've listed some related references and books that you can read up on in the comment section below for now I hope that was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in our next video take care bye